Hey, hey, Tony Gass is here. I want to talk to you about long distance relationships. Last night when I was doing the Instagram Q&A that if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that. And them questions are so interesting, but I kept seeing long distance relationship questions. And so you'll know when somebody puts LD, that means long distance. I know some of y'all thought LD meant something else. That means long distance. And it's talking about a long distance relationship. And now here's the thing that I want you to understand. This is hard now. And if a man is honest with you, he will let you know. But the male mind, and I can't speak for a woman's mind, but me being a man, me being around all men my whole life, me being in locker rooms in college with 95 men. As a man, you learn how men mind work. And you also learn as a man that we're all the same. We're all the same until men start to grow in certain areas. Men pick and choose where we want to be disciplined at. So there are some men who choose that they want to attack pornography, masturbation, and they don't want to do those things and we can win in those areas. That's the area that I attack. On our masturbation, I don't do those things and I win in that area. Faithfulness, like physical faithfulness to one woman and emotional faith, faithfulness to one woman. That's another area that we can attack. That's an area that I attack and I'm winning in that area. Then you have men who choose that they want to attack finances and they are amazing with finances. They, they budget they save, they invest, and they are amazing in finances, and they win in that area. Then you have some men who attack the body, meaning that they eat right, they lift and exercise, and sleep right, and their body is amazing, great shape. They take, they take that seriously. So those are the main key areas of a man's life that a man can attack. Now, then you have, and I mentioned being faithful to a woman, but then you have fatherhood. That is an area that some men say, I am going to be the absolute best father the world has ever seen. And that's his relationship between him and his children. Now, listen, you... You, you won't meet a man, you won't meet a man that is a master in all. You won't meet that man. I've never met him. I'm not him. You won't meet him. Now, I chose to attack pornography, masturbation, and beat those areas. I chose to attack... Uh, the trials and tribulations of being faithful to one woman. I chose to attack finances. I still struggle in that area because why I like to spend my money. Because I, I literally don't mind going flat broke and then building it back. Like That's just my mindset. Some men not like that. As long as I'm on God's green earth, like the man say in the song, I'm going to triple my worth. I don't mind going to zero and building up. Some men that scared him to death. Me, I know how to get it. I know how to get on my grind. I know how to create and produce. So I don't struggle there. The body, I struck, I do not care to work out. Like I got to get up and push myself to work out. Y'all see me doing a little workout videos with you. I told you I wouldn't be able to do it all the time now just cause I also don't like monotony. Some men are creatures of habit. They go to bed at the same time. They wake up at the same time. 
they do the same thing every day they eat the same meals they do the same routine regimen i hate monotony so and then where i said being a father i'm here for my kids in the home every single day i go to all the games i take them to practice every day what's this okay so all right i got the little notice part on the phone about my wi-fi acting up i go to all the games but now i'm not the dad that my son is 7 and 14 my son 7 and 14 i'm not the dad that can sit there or now i can or i will but my son's schedule so busy and so moving around I don't have to sit there or we don't get the luxury of sitting for two hours just playing with dinosaurs at this age. Now, when my, when my sons was younger, yeah, we could do that. But now, my son in school, they get home 4.30, 5 o'clock, 5, 5.30, we leave them for soccer practice. Get to practice, both of them have practice. Leave practice, come home, they eating dinner, it's bedtime. So, but me being here, me providing for them, make sure they have everything that they need, I'm mastering that. But you're going to have some dads that they're going to be their son's best friend. They're going to play catch every day. They're going to play soccer every day. They're going to teach them how to box, teach them how to do football, baseball. They're going to be amazing at that. But when you start to look at these men now, and evaluate the men you know in your life. And a other thing is like our body and how we treat our body. When I said the body, that's all, that also means some men do not drink alcohol. Some men drink alcohol but don't get drunk. Some men do not smoke anything. Some men will smoke celebratory, like a cigar or something. If they win some, do some big. And so some men will master that. And so what you're going to find is that no man will be Jesus Christ and be perfect in every area. So for me, I'm going to spend my money how I want to spend my money. I work hard for it. I'm not trying to hear all that. Oh, don't buy you no new car. That's a depreciating asset. And you got to, you know, say, say, say live beneath your means no i'm living at the max of my means because <laughs> tomorrow ain't promised and that's just my view on it some men say look i'm gonna master my money i'm gonna master my body but i'm not finna be with no one woman i'm finna i'm finna that ain't human that ain't that ain't natural i'm finna have me multiple women i'm finna sleep around and that's their view on that and then some men gonna say that Hey, I'm not physically cheating with another woman. I'm just watching this here on the phone and taking care of myself. And they're going to rationalize that and okay that in their mind. So this is what you have to understand. That's the breakup, you know, the breakdown of men. And I went all the way through that just to help you understand how long distance relationships for men are extremely hard and it's almost non-existent and and i and i this is very upsetting for a lot of women because i can't believe how many people in a long distance relationship i'm here to tell you that got to be a very special man that got to be a very special man for that long distance relationship to work and if you don't feel like this guy is cut from a different cloth like this is a special man if that's not how you feel, nine out of ten times you're getting cheated on. Nine out of ten times you're getting cheated on. If this man is not a virgin, nine out of ten times you're getting cheated on. Now, you might have that one out of ten. Now, hey, okay. It's hundreds of millions of people in America alone. So, one out of ten, okay, that, that, that's going to be up there. All right, that's going to be up there. So that's, you know, 30 million out of 300 out of 300 million. That's that's a big number. But that of course that 300 million ain't all men. 
So what you have to realize is, okay, if there's 160 million men in America, 16 million of them could be faithful in a long distance relationship. Do you have one of those 16 million? That, if you're in America, you're in another country, do the math over there. But Google how many men in your country, see how many in there, divide that by 10. That number right there, that's how many men that can be faithful long distance. And see, this is the thing. It's just the makeup of men. It's the makeup of the mind. One thing you're going to notice about men are, is it, it just it's a continuation from childhood. And that's why I use the term grown boys. Because sometimes as men, we become an adult legally, but we don't grow into a man. We still a boy. So look back, look back to childhood. And when you go to a classroom, for y'all school teachers, you go to a classroom, typically what you hear said is that the boys are rambunctious, if that's the word, that they just high energy, hyperactive, the, and if, if a game is going on, the boys typically going to take it overboard. They, it, the boys is typically going to be the ones doing the, the spitballs at the teacher. The boys typically going to be doing the fadeaways, the fadeaway shooting the, the balled up piece of paper into the trash. The boys typically, if somebody flips over their desk, if somebody flips out of their desk, if somebody falls out of their chair, it's typically a boy. Not to say girls don't do that. Not to say girls can't do it. It's typically a boy. On the playground, when the teeth get knocked out, when somebody eye bleeding, when somebody lip bleed, when somebody fall and get hurt, it's typically a boy. And so if you have sons, my older son kicked out the front two teeth of my younger son. That's boys. They were play wrestling, play, play fighting. My younger son threw my older son off, off the bed. My older son felt, you know, pretending he was falling. He fell off the bed. My younger son was behind him. My older son brought his legs with him. When he brought his legs, it hit my younger son in the mouth. Knocked his two baby teeth out. My younger son had to go to the dentist and get a bridge with two artificial teeth until his new teeth started to come in. That's boys. And this happens to girls too, but on average, when you hear boy moms tell you the stories of their sons, they like, whoa. So like, we, I take my sister and she got two girls, they older, and then she got a son who younger. When she used to watch my son, my oldest son, Tony the Third, when my sister used to watch my son, she used to say she used to tell my wife, he is bad. He is bad. She didn't realize that my son is actually a good boy. But she just had she raised two girls at that time. So she didn't realize what come with a boy. When she got her son, she started to realize her son bad. <laughs> now she know your son bad. My son good. This just boys. So when, when I take them to the game, like we at the game, we got a suite at the soccer game and at the um, NFL game, at the NBA game, I ran suite. So that, especially in this here, what we got going on with the old ed. So, so we got the, our own space and we not sitting right next to somebody. My son, who is seven, my youngest and her son, they will get up out their chairs from watching the game and come back into the back of the suite and they will open the drawer that's under the refrigerator. It's a drawer that come out and they will start dunking in there, dunking cups and napkins, get a little play, play, get a little ball. They, they shooting shots, they, they dripping, they dunking. They get the trash can, they dunking. And it's like, can y'all sit down and watch the game? That is boys. 
guess what? That is men. And this is what a lot of times what women don't understand is that there is a big difference between a woman and a man. That just like there is a big difference between a girl and a boy. Sometimes you have similarities, but that is the exception. Sometimes you got a boy who acts just like a girl. And, and he feels like he is a girl and sometimes they become a girl. And then sometimes you have a girl who acts just like a boy and she feels like a boy and then she later becomes a boy. Sometimes you have that. Sometimes that happens in adulthood when a man want to become a woman, like uh, Bruce Jenner became Caitlyn Jenner. And then when a woman become a uh, man, or however that works, I can't think of a, a, a example of that one where a woman became became a man on a in a public um, scene like a celebrity that that I, that I can think of. And um, now nah, is RuPaul a man or is that a woman? So I could think of some examples now, but look at this in your real life, your everyday life, your friends, your family, and all this. You will notice a woman act away, a man act away. And so now when you get grown, what women fail to realize is that a man is not going to make sense to you. And what men fail to realize is a woman is not going to make sense to you because the brains are different. Now, I heard somebody teaching that the brain's the same. If the brains was the exact same, then we would act the exact same. That let me know common sense. The brain is not the same. Sometimes these scientists think they know everything they're talking about. It's like, come on, bro. That cannot be the case if we act totally different. Now, hush. Because you ain't seen no good brain. You ain't studied no brain good. I'll buy it. Because you got that degree. Men and women are different. So, look. On average, on average, remember, there's always an exception to the rule. But on average, a woman falls in love with the idea of love. So what this means is a woman can be in love in a relationship and not actually have love in the relationship because women typically idealize love and fantasize. I don't know if idealize is a word, but it sounds good. We're going to use it right there and or fantasize about love. So a lot of times women will fall in love with their imagination their idea, their fantasy of love in a relationship and not actually have that. That man may be cursing them out. That man may be cheating on them and the woman is forgiving him. The man may put hands on her and she forgives him. The man may ghost her and she takes him back. The man may leave. A lady wrote me last night and said for 12 years or 16 years, this man has run, or 20 years, this man has run in and out her life and she wants to know how to heal. These are, these are the questions that I hear. I have never once, I've reached um, hundreds of millions of people online. Hundreds of millions of people online. I've had countless men write me and I've had countless times three women write me. I have never once seen a man write me and said, this woman has run in and out of my life. I have never once seen that, ever. You may have seen it one time, but think about this. How many times do you see men let a woman cheat on him and he stays? He cries, he complains, but yet he forgives and he takes her back. How many times have you seen a man let his woman leave him, cheat on him, and go get pregnant by another man, and then come back home to him, let him know the baby is another man's baby, and then the man cries and forgives her, and says, okay, I'm going to take care of this baby. Now, yes, you've seen this on a TV show, reality show somewhere. You may know one man who has done this. 
typically the time that I know that it happened, the man thought the baby was his. So it's not the same. She didn't tell him it's somebody else's baby. She made him think the baby is his. He fell in love with the baby. Then he found out later. Baby was like five, between five and seven when he found out. This baby don't look nothing like me in no way, shape, or form. Not complexion, not facial features, not anything. And then come to find out the baby come from another man. And that his wife was sleeping with him and another man at the same time. But when this was happening, there, there was a long distance relationship. And the man was cheating, the woman was cheating. But this woman was not your average woman. This woman was a woman who uh, was raised without any raising. No parental figure, like no love, no nurturing, no just get it how you live, get it off the muscle, sell your body to make up money. This was this type of woman. So this not, again, this is an exception to the rule. So you don't see this on average. You don't see this on average. Now, do women cheat in long distance relationships? Yes, absolutely. I've talked to women who cheat in their long distance relationship. But now think now, remember back to the mind. Remember back to the mind. Think about the mind. Think about the hyperactivity in boys versus girls. Think about this. So if a woman will cheat in her long distance relationship, what is the likelihood of the man cheating in the long distance relationship because a lot of women are in long distance relationships and are 100% faithful. A lot of women lose their man to prison and remain faithful. Not all, but a lot. You may be that woman. You may be that woman or you may know that woman, but how many men do you know? And especially if you're a man listening to this and you're in a long distance relationship, are you faithful? Are you faithful emotionally? Meaning you're not watching earn agar here. You're not flirting with a woman at work. You ain't got a work wife. You ain't got a gym wife. You ain't got a Facebook wife. You ain't got an Instagram wife. If you are a man watching this, you don't have to cap for the comments. Just ask yourself, are you faithful? Emotionally and physically, are you faithful? If you know that you're not faithful and if you feel a lot of temptation and it feels very hard to be 100% faithful to your woman in this long distance relationship, then you proving what I'm saying to be right. Now listen, one thing about men, another thing about men, a man practically has to be tortured to tell the truth about the man law. That's why you can count on one hand how many men out of the entire world, out of the entire world, how many men can you count doing what I'm doing as a married and self-proclaimed faithful because you'll never know. But based on your intuition, based on your discretion, based on common sense of, well, see, no, because we had a brother who was giving away the entire game and was cheating. Now that right there, I cannot, I that helps you also understand men, the mind of a man. I cannot wrap my mind around how this man got millions of followers online, got a wife, had, I had never seen the man wife, and then the man get exposed for cheating and he giving out game to women every day, all day, and making millions of dollars doing it, and got a wife, 
never showed the wife until he get exposed for cheating. I cannot understand that for the life of me. I have not been a perfect man in my life. But when God gave me a platform, I sat my butt down. When God gave me a platform, I said, listen, I'm not going to play with God. I'm not, you're not going to you're not gonna find nobody in the entire world that I'm sleeping with but Sheree Gaskin. You could go search high and low. You could, and I'm gonna tell you, I don't know if this is just the devil trying me, or if this just or if this actual people trying me, or if this just the women that's trying me. But I've been getting messages, I've been getting DMs from women who look like a look that I ain't never seen before. A look that I ain't never seen before. Their their look has is reserved for billionaire men high high multi-millionaire men typically men that's six foot or taller with an eight pack of abs i'm five ten with a two pack and i ain't never showed that two pack so they don't see that so the fact that these kind of women writing me i say this is our hell test because it's certain type of women it's certain type of women that fit inside of a mold, that fit inside of a look, that those women have never met a man that did not try to shoot his shot at her. And guess what? If I got to be the first man, and if I got to be one of the only men, <clears throat> but let me let me let now let me get back to what I was telling you. How many men? And again, you ain't got to list a name out. In my comments because you don't know us you don't know us you don't know that I'm faithful to my wife for a fact you can believe the word coming out my mouth now you can believe the word coming out my mouth but you don't know so that's why I tell y'all stop promoting us stop saying our name in other people comments like you could trust somebody and believe somebody but you don't know us we online I could be cheating every single day on my wife and you would not know because guess what? There's a group of women that will cheat with a man and never tell nobody. To God be the glory, that made me throw up in my mouth because I'm a different kind of man. I never wanted an easy woman. When I was in the world and I was cheating and I could cheat and as a single man and I could sleep with any woman, I never wanted an easy woman. That's just, that's not how I'm made up. I always wanted to work for mine. I always wanted a challenge. So when when I sat with my homeboys and one of my homeboys said, and we probably was, it was between 18 and 20. And one homeboy said, hey, I done been with 300 women. Another homeboy said he done been with over 600. Now they could have been capping, they could have been making up them numbers. I know for a fact I was over 100. And so I, I ain't had nobody to lie to, or uh, reason to lie. But the thing about it is I could rem I could believe their numbers. I could believe their numbers because we, we would be in certain situations to where we will see, we'll be in a certain house to where we'll see 13 women. 10 or more women come through in a day. So we could see that. So now, and so I know for a fact that the numbers could have been there. The reason why my numbers were not there is because I still was picky. So how can a man cross a hundred women by the age of 21 being picky? That show you how sexually charged this world is. It also show you how easy it is for men to find somebody to sleep with. Now see, for me, this was never paying for nothing, never begging for nothing, never overworking for nothing. It still was that easy because people just want, we wasn't being raised right. It's like, you know right from wrong, but if you don't have a conviction in your heart about doing right, you're not gonna do right. Cause we give into sin. We, we give into sin. Our sinful nature takes over. So listen to me. How many men do you see doing what I'm doing with the heart that I do it with, with the consistency that I do it with, and with the amount of game that I'm giving away? 
who's been married for more than a decade and you can see our wife online. You can see us post pictures of our wife. You can see us praise our wife. How many men? You probably could get us on one hand. Again, that goes to show you, that goes to show you that you practically have to torture a man to get a man to break the man law. Because what we doing is the work of the Lord to level the playing field. And a lot of men don't understand that because they working for the devil and they don't care about burning in hell. They don't care about that because a lot of them don't believe in it. They don't believe there will be repercussions for their actions because they think they bigger than God. They think they higher than God. But a man with sense knows we got the answer to our creator. A man with sense know that. But a lot of men is ignorant and they don't know it and they don't believe it. And that's what the Bible tell us is gonna happen. That men gonna be conceited. They're gonna be lovers of themselves. Gonna be ignorant. That's why Sodom and Gomorrah happened. That's why the flood happened. That's why Jesus was crucified because men are going to be ignorant and arrogant. And that's a dangerous combination. So what you have to understand as a woman is that when you trying to understand a man, you have to look for his renewal of his spirit and his mind. His character has to be different. If he is average, like every other man you've met, you're going to get the same thing you've always got. So a man, it is impossible for a man to have bad character or legitimate character flaws and be faithful. It's impossible because love is a moral act. It takes morals to love. To be faithful is a moral act. It takes morals to be faithful. So if a man lacks morals and values and principles and character, he is going to be a cheating dog of a man. Point blank period. So the biggest fallacy, which I don't know what that means, but it sounds good right there. We're going to use that. So is women picking men who have low morals. So if you pick a man who abuses his body, meaning he puts poison into his body in the form of an addiction. That man is very, very capable of cheating. And the only reason he won't cheat is if he is too incapacitated or his libido is too low because of what he's abusing his body with. If you find a man that has an unhealthy addiction, so the only thing a man should be addicted to is inhaling oxygen, eating food in normal portions at normal times in regular amounts, in normal amounts, and drinking water. That's what a man ought to be addicted to. And if he does just that alone, he'll be all right. Now, he should have some exercise in there. Myself personally, my exercise is going to come in different ways. Sitting on here talking, that's exercise. Okay? When I'm loving my wife, that's exercise. Okay? I got a gym upstairs, outside, above my pool. I go out there. I go up there, and I get on the treadmill. Get on that treadmill. I got a, I got a heavy bag in there. I do my little boxing. I bought me a virtual reality thing. I put that on and they got a boxing game on there and I get on there and box and I'm in the uh, uh, uh. I try to get the 12 rounds. When I'm done, I'm drenched in sweat. That's what I'm probably gonna do today because it's fun at the same time and I'm drenched in sweat. That, that, that is why, that's why my body ain't been let go. That's why I'm up, cause I get me some in there but I ain't gonna be crazy about it now. I'm not finna be a gym rat. I'm not finna be a meathead. I'm not finna be all that because a lot of times you also what you got to look at is obsessive when a man, a man should not obsess over anything but when you are obsessive so when you see what we call a meathead or a gym rat typically he is fighting an insecurity he's fighting an insecurity a lot of times it comes from a man being bullied as a child 
Other times it comes from a man catching a disease and feeling like the more he works out is his only chance of prolonging his life because of the disease he has caught. And the other times it's from a little guy, a little member. And that is when you typically see a man obsess over working out. And uh, the other thing would be from the adulation, which I don't know what that means, but we're going to use that right there, from women. The praise that he gets from women and the jealousy he gets from other men, the attention, which also means it comes from insecurity. So that's typically what makes a man obsessive about something in one way or another. And this is what you have to realize. Now, a lot of men are operating from pain. And this pain comes from abandonment from their father or their mother. Abandonment, that's an A. Or abuse, that's another A. Abandonment or abuse is typically where the pain comes from. And it normally is rooted in childhood so that's that pre prevents the maturation of a lot of men that is why you will see men in their 40s still juggling women sleeping with multiple women and refusing to get married and the reason being is the man is hurting he's lost He's confused, he's in pain. But men will mask it with muscles and or money. And masculinity, but toxic masculinity. This is typically where this comes from. So this is what you have to understand. This video is supposed to be about long distance relationship, but it's gonna have to be understanding the man because this is really, because uh, this went uh, somewhere totally different. This video is about to be understanding relationship, long distance relationship, but I had to fully explain this thing because I know women get so offended to hear the reality of a man. Women get so upset about that because women want to believe that it is so easy to be a well-rounded mature man women want to believe that because i think for a lot of women it comes a lot easier i think for a lot of women being a well-rounded woman that is mature it, it seems to be much easier for women and i say that as a man but i really as a man i'm around men i meet men i very rarely meet a well-rounded man i very rarely meet it and so but here's the thing so the question is, well, Tony, if, he, if these men are so rare, how do you expect us to find a good man? That's where the woman becomes the activator. The woman becomes the catalyst. The woman becomes the X factor. And that is a burden that most women don't want to bear. So what does that look like? What that looks like is a woman meeting a man with a knowledge and general understanding of the male mind and male behavior. Then this woman, knowing herself and knowing what she wants and what will aid in her happiness and her joy and her peace in life. The things that will aid her in those areas and this woman refusing to settle for less because here's the thing this man has everything that it takes to be a faithful and honest man every man can be faithful and honest but with human nature we will do the least that is required of us and we will only elevate to the next level if it is required so if your job says listen you can work from home 
how many of us will go in to work? If your job says, listen, you can get a full-time salary, but you only have to work three days a week. How many of us are going to fight the job to say, no, I'm working five days. And if you try to stop me from working five days a week, there's going to be problems. It's going to be repercussions. So I'm going to say, do not try to keep me to three days. I want five days of work. How many of us are going to do that? As humans, we do the leash required. We sleep how we want to sleep. We eat how we want to eat. We work out how we want to work out. When do we typically change? When we get new knowledge. When we, when we have a new understanding of the body and how it works and life expectancy and how to reach your maximum life expectancy or exceed it. That's typically when we change. The other thing is when we go to the doctor and the doctor says you have high cholesterol or you have diabetes one or diabetes two, I don't know which one is higher or lower, and you're gonna need this medication or you have diverticulitis, or this right here, or that right there, that's typically when we do what is required of us and we change our life. I have a family member who does not like their body, does not like working out, does not like eating right, and let their self go. But the same family member has a very bad problem with money. So to save this family member's life, I literally had to say, if you walk, every day you walk, I will pay you $20. This family member has not missed a day of walking. Now don't comment on that on my comments because I don't play about my family and I have somebody visit you. Just me sharing this, but not for you to jump on here and pile on. But this is the reality that had I not introduced a stimuli, a reward system for doing exercise, this family member does not have the intelligence because this family member was not educated on the body in school because their school system did not teach because of this family member's age, they just were passed along through school. This family member is also a person of color. We live in the South. In this family member's age group, all the teachers were white. 99.9% .9 of white teachers in this family member's city did not care about black students because integration had happened not long before this family member went through school and it was forced upon white people to integrate. They did not want black people in their schools. So therefore, this family member in the South, this is, this is not the case in New York City. This is not the case in California. This is the case in the South, in most school districts. Black people who are maybe considered baby boomers were not properly educated because they were forced to integrate with whites and the teachers were white in most cases and so this family member although an adult by the time I was in third grade I could read and write better than this family member so think about this as humans we do what makes us feel good but Doing what makes us feel good may not be the best thing for us. So that's why we struggle with our finances. Because we want to buy this new pair of shoes. We want to go out to eat and eat this particular thing. But it may not be the best for our budget. It may not be the best for our body. But we do it because it brings pleasure. Our pleasure masks our pain. And so this is the human struggle, the daily struggle. 
And so as humans, we do the least required of us. When we get new knowledge, new knowledge requires that we do something different. Because when you know better, you do better. So it's hard to consciously do the wrong thing when you know the right thing. And you know that you know that you know it. It's embedded in you, like it's in your spirit. So this is what we have to understand. When it comes to men in a relationship, a man will do what is required of him to do. And if he does not want to do that, he will sabotage the relationship or he will leave the relationship. But if this man wants this woman and he wants to be in this relationship, he is going to do whatever is required of him by this woman to be in this relationship. And this is where a woman becomes the catalyst in his life. Because there is a very small group of women who take care of themselves spiritually, emotionally, and physically. So the same way women say there's not a lot of good men, there are more good women then there are good men, but there's but there's more women than men as well. So there are not a whole lot of women that take care of themselves spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically, and financially, and socially. Equally so, there are not a lot of men that take care of themselves in that area. But women were given more responsibility in the world than men. So the mindset of a woman is naturally, biologically, able to mature faster than the man. That is why women start having their menstrual cycle as young as nine, 10, 11. If it happens at 14, 15, that would be considered late, right? In most cases. I have a client who got pregnant at 10 and got married at 11. So this is what we have to understand. The brain is spiritually by the creator that scientists cannot understand. The responsibility in the world also correlates with the maturation of the mind. When you look at a man's life, what we are required to do is earn money to provide for the family. For most men, earning money is a very fun challenge. It is a very fun challenge. It can be stressful when you live above your means, when you live outside of your means. It can be stressful. But it is a fun challenge. I have fun doing it. And I meet a lot of men who love the grind, who love the work when it comes to earning money. I meet a lot of countless men who love the grind. I cannot say I meet countless men who love the grind of being faithful to a woman. That's different. That's different. Now, think about this. The same way, talk to a three-year-old girl, talk to a three-year-old boy. The communication on average, on average, is going to be very different. This three-year-old girl, is she going to be able to articulate herself? She's going to be well thought out. At three years old. I know a two-year-old, a two-year-old girl, my wife's best friend, her daughter, was having full conversations at two years old. Neither one of my sons, who are both straight-A students, was talking on her level at two years old. But I it's several of them little girls with me having two boys and walking them into class the few times that I did it. And you hearing little girls talking, it is completely different. 
than the little boys talking. It is completely different. And I was blown away, but it showed me what God did. Because this because also this little girl will have to start processing her body bleeding for five to seven days a month at the age of 13. That is something that any mind is going to struggle with. And I've heard some mom say that their daughter would just scream and cry when that first happened. Just boohoo cry like, what is this my life? Are you kidding me? What kind of God would do this to me? Some women have to lay on cold tile floors because their stomach hurts so bad from the cramping during their cycle. Some women have to take pills, and medicine, get on birth control to control their cycle. Some women have to take birth control to control their hormones because without that birth control, their skin breaks out with acne. Like, that, it, it's a lot that a woman's body goes through that a man's body, with me being honest as a man, cannot begin to fathom. Me living with a woman for the last 16 years has shown me as a man how easy my life is. And men hate to hear that. I, I, my life is easy. Because our society tells women that women have to be sex slaves, chefs, maids, butlers, strippers, porn stars, nannies, mothers, and wives. But our society tells a man you have to be the bank just get bread just get money pay the bills and then whatever pain you have whatever pain you have whatever abandonment issues you have whatever childhood trauma you have as a man we got a strip club for you have a blast we got a pornography for you now we got it on the app for you. Have a blast. We got OnlyDummies.com. Have a blast. We got a whole trafficking ring that if you like the man who was friends with Bill Gates, uh, what the man name? I think he took his life. I think he took his life in, in prison waiting on trial or something like that who was traveling with the 1315. We got a whole ring for you. As a man, have a blast. See, this the reality that, this, this the burden I have to bear, being born on International Women's Day. So this feel like a cruel joke for me. Don't you think I would love the pleasure but just being able to go to the casino and gamble as a man. We got a casino for you. Have a blast. We got sports betting for you. Have a blast. We got video games for you. PlayStation and Xbox. Have a blast. You see what I'm saying? And so, men, we have so many vices. Like, I got guys that I know that literally have to according to their mindset, have to smoke weed every single day, multiple times a day. Whatever that pain is dealing, is handling, is taking care of, I can't speak to because I have not walked with that man through his whole life. Whatever trauma that, 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 that is helping him heal, I cannot speak to it. But this is what we have. And so, as men, we have some type of addiction. Now, I don't study women on the level that I study men because I had to try to understand myself as a man. So for me, my addiction is 
the fruit of my labor. So like I like to utilize my credit and my earnings to reward myself for my sacrifice and hard work. So when I hit a goal and I get to a certain place, I'll buy me a new car. I'll buy me a new watch. That that's that's my thing. You know, that's my thing. Uh, I'll buy for other people. I'll bless other people. That's my thing. For some men, that's stupid. But for me, I choose that over smoking weed. I choose that over gambling. I choose that over cheating on my wife. I choose that over pornography. I choose that over masturbation. I choose those. I choose me reaping the rewards of the seeds I've sown. So I got a lot of cars and I take care of other people, my family. I bless other people. And for me, it's like, this is what comes at this level of spiritual and financial success. And so I paint, so it's, it's, I know men who they watch nasty movies every single night and for an hour or more and they just try about to take the skin off that thing and I don't know if that make the thing grow or not if that's why they're doing it I don't know but it's a it's a release because it has been said which these scientists don't know everything they talking about now but it's been said that when you have a or Adam or Adam it activates the same part of the brain as cocaine. So if cocaine will get you high, and to a lesser extent, that right there feeling that you get from an organ gives you a high. That's why we chase it. That's why we love it. Because in that moment, you experience pleasure. You experience pleasure, you experience a release, and in that moment, you forget about your problems. In that moment, you forget about what you're going through, what you're struggling with. You forget about your pain. You forget about your trauma. You forget about your past. You forget about your childhood because that orgasm has given you a high. So this is what men who are under pressure or in pain find something to alleviate that. And so, and we all have our thing. So my wife might look at me I'd be like, really, baby? Another car? But see, I expose myself. But see, for me, some people will take it as, oh, you bragging. So that's why I don't show stuff and all that. I'm about to make a car channel, but I'm not going to promote it on this page. I'm not going to cross-promote. If you bump into it, you bump into it. And I'm just like, hey, I just got to, I got to live. Because for me, that'll be an outlet. Because I carry millions of people's problems on my shoulder. I got to listen to everybody comments i gotta listen to everybody complaints everybody disagreeing with what i'm saying and people who don't know me attacking me for my message and all i'm trying to do is help that's a lot of pressure so with that pressure what they say pressure busts pipes or create diamonds it also helped create diamonds and so with that pressure i'm trying to become a diamond but i'm also gonna have pressure and it's gonna bust some pipes too you, you, you have one with the other. And so this is the life of a man. Now, I have to be honest and realize that if God gave it to you and told you to build it, he's going to give you the tools. So I realized that to a lot of women, if a woman step outside of herself and look at her life, she may see the reality of the complications and the complexity of her life. Now, a woman inside of her life, a woman inside of her life may, may do it. She may figure out a way and do it with ease. The same thing as a man. We could get into a vein and we could, it becomes, it can become easy when you figure out how to do it. Now, it still could be stressful and stuff, but it's like the stress becomes a part of it. And so... And as a man, you know, and I feel like as humans, we want to be celebrated and we want to celebrate. 
And it just depends on what we do to do that. So for some men, watching that nasty movie is celebration. For some men, the fruit of their labor, spending their money may be gambling. I noticed this with a lot of white men because in and in, in black men too, but some if a person is if their family if you see a man's family or his culture look down on him for a certain thing, all it does is it gets channeled into something else. When a man can't be, when a man can't express himself in the way that would be fun or healthy. So, um, I sold a 72 Chevelle because I wasn't driving it that much. And then I gave away a 79 Monte Carlo. And then I gave my barber, I gave that to my barber. I also gave my barber a box Chevy, a 88 or 89 box Chevy. Hey, baby. Baby. My wife just texted me. Out. Maybe she about to go or something. I was about to call her and tell her she need me to come holler at me. Shooting the video. We going over an hour today now. And so... I gave my, um, and this me sharing transparently my stupidity because of somebody else. And, and I'm sharing this with you so you understand how we all struggle in an area or we all have some type of outlet. But this ain't for you to, I don't need no advice. I don't need no advice. I don't come on here for advice in the comments. I already know. I already know. We, uh, we all know. Everybody know. Sometimes we got to have that confirmation though. I already got my confirmation. So I gave my barber two cars. And I got my daddy a Maserati. Um, $90,000. I got my other homeboy that I played football in college with. And he's still a friend to this day. I met him when I was 18 in college. Uh, I got him a Yukon XL. So it's the long Yukon. I paid 42000 My sister, I got her a Benz. I paid 35000 My mama, I got her a Benz. I paid, I paid uh, 46000 My mother-in-law, I got her a Benz. I paid probably 20 something so this uh, this throughout my life, you know, throughout me starting companies, building business. A lot of times people think that um, that's YouTube. I didn't add YouTube. I've been in business in 2007. I didn't add YouTube seriously into my life till 2019. But I really didn't promote myself in my courses as much as I should have. I started promoting my stuff more throughout the pandemic and. I started to realize like, hey, I don't have to grind as hard or travel as much. So for me, if I'm sacrificing, because anytime you as a human forego pleasure, and what I mean by pleasure is I'm talking about the pleasure that leads to pain, not the pleasure that leads to happiness. And so anytime you forego pleasure, because as a human, if I heard a woman say, what if I wait until marriage and I get with this man and he got one of these? I'm going to be extremely, extremely upset. Extremely upset. If his thing this size. Now, there are men who think it's this size. And I heard women tell me that. My sister dated a man like that. And she said, Tony, I kid you not I am telling you no lie it is this size I don't understand that and how that happened and what just happened I just don't understand just like if it's just a genome that's off if it's a chromosome that's off like that 
that is mind boggling to me that just in their genetic code that little code was left off that is mind boggling so guess what if you forego pleasure so this let's say this woman with this here and she can't feel nothing and she got an ex-boyfriend and he got him he got him old whippersnapper down now and she could go over there and get that anytime she want to but she say i'm not gonna do that so if you forego that pleasure because that's the wrong thing to do because you married or because you're in a relationship then you're going to want to have a release and pleasure elsewhere so you may get you a toy or you may use retail therapy so this is what we do as humans we forego pleasure in one area or we endure pain in one area and then we go to pleasure in another area so for me it would be pleasurable to be into pornography but that pleasure will lead to pain so I sacrifice and I forego that it will be pleasurable to sleep with different women have a variety of women but that pleasure will lead to pain because it'll create soul ties eventually a disease will be caught and if I'm in a relationship hearts will be broken so I forego that pleasure it will be pleasurable to go gamble because you could hit big and you could win but that pleasure will lead to pain because if you're gonna win big you gotta lose big so that pleasure will lead to pain it will be pleasurable to get drunk because it will numb my brain it'll numb my thoughts and i won't think about the stress or the worries of the world but that pleasure will lead to pain because i'm gonna get liver disease or uh you're losing brain cells you're impairing your judgment ability you may drive drunk and kill somebody or get killed you may be irate and abuse your family your woman or your child or family and friends because you inebriated and you talking to people like they trash so pleasure don't lead to happiness pleasure lead to pain it will be pleasurable to smoke weed because of the chemicals in it giving the brain a release that relaxes the body that soothes the pain the chronic pain that you feel in your back in your legs in your head wherever and that release gives you a high you forget about your failures you forget about your abandonment you forget about your abuse in that moment as long as that high lasts it would be pleasurable but you smoking something so it will affect your esophagus it will affect your brain chemistry it will affect your lungs it will have an effect on you because it's being put into your body at an abnormal usage rate and so instead of being used medicinally for during a period of your chemo treatment or whatever a doctor may recommend this plant for if you're using it every single day and it's not being administered to go in your body and fight a specific thing is going to start to tear up and destroy other things that's common sense people who are under the addiction of anything will fight for its right so we want to legalize that marijuana now OF the website which I'm saying it if you don't know what I'm talking about then you gotta look because I don't like promote businesses especially something like that they now are trying to change their offering their sex videos because the banks backing out on them and don't want to process those payments those wires that they send in from their system to their creators 
and investors are now don't really want to invest in something that's shaky so they coming out and saying we finna stop this but now they're trying to backtrack and say well we absolutely gonna allow sexually explicit content but okay basically mean eventually they're gonna have to cut that off and so you could go and get the pleasure of a subscription site that you watching other humans naked doing the nasty and that could be entertaining and that could be pleasurable but that's eventually going to lead to pain because it's going to create an unhealthy addiction it's going to create an ideology and fantasies in your mind that are not realistic it's going to make you compare those made up videos and extremely practiced videos to your actual partner in real life who does not do that for a living so therefore will not be as good as them will not perform the same way and it will never measure up so that pleasure will lead to pain so here's the thing now retail therapy and shopping could be pleasurable but if you don't put it inside of a certain box if it's not if it's not inside of a budget then guess what that pleasure will lead to pain because you will overspend and now you can't pay your bills or now your credit cards are maxed out and you can't afford to pay them down so now you're paying interest and you end up paying triple quadruple the cost of the items that you bought and that's going to be a painful experience also, it's going to be a painful experience having a terrible credit score with maxed out credit cards. So now you can't go get another car. You can't get a house. You can't do anything but just live off your debit card. So however far your cash will go, that's as far as you could go. And then now you got to go to Amscot and get a payday loan. And so now you live it up under all that right there. And guess what? No amount of money is too much money to spend. Because the bigger your bag, the bigger your appetite. So when you get Jeff Bezos money, what do you do? You spend $10 billion a year for your hobby of spaceships to go to the moon. Flying private is no longer good enough. Now you got to build spaceships to take you to the moon. You see how that works? What Jeff Bezos just went through? A divorce. What Bill Gates just went through? A divorce. The two richest men in the world. What Elon Musk doing? Is he even married? What happened to Steve Jobs? Died early. In his 60s. Listen, men. Money don't solve your problems. Money don't solve your problems. And if anything, it could create more problems. So guess what? I got friends... I say friends, but, you know, associates, colleagues, you know, what have you, who are of the white race. And in the white race, it is typically frowned upon to buy jewelry and to buy flashy cars. But they still spend their money just as bad as the black race. It just... Black people are into diamonds, diamond jewelry, and designer labels. Whereas the white guy with money would drive, instead of a Rolls Royce, may drive an Audi that costs a third of what a Rolls Royce costs, but he will spend the cost of a Rolls Royce on a single flight on a single flight. I see this, I see this with my own eyes. I see this with my own eyes. Like this, this real story. Or will buy a yacht that costs 20 Rolls Royce. But if he buys a Rolls Royce, his race, depending on where he lives, the city he lives, especially if it's in a country town or a small town, will look at him like, a show off but they will praise 
his yacht, or his private jet. So every man got a habit. Every man got a problem. What you have to identify as a man and as a woman is what comes with this problem. If this brings pleasure to this man, will this pleasure lead to pain? If he got enough money to afford that and he has passive income that's not going nowhere and he's still building business, then he can afford the pleasure of the money that he's spending. But if he living above his means, eventually he's gonna be filing bankruptcy like y'all former president had to do countless times. You see what I'm saying? So what you have to realize and understand about a man is men do what is required or they leave. We do what is required or we leave. A man is not going to give you more than you ask for. That's why you should always be honest about if you want a birthday party, if you want a gift for your birthday, if you want a gift for Christmas. Do not say, no, you don't have to get me anything, and then be crying when he doesn't get you anything. That is the makeup of a man. That's also the makeup of a woman. I don't require my wife to cook every day. So guess what? She does not cook every day because that's not a stipulation of mine. I don't require my wife to clean something every day. So guess what? She doesn't clean something every day. I don't require my wife to sleep with me every day. So guess what? She doesn't sleep with me every day. You know why? Because she's a human. And humans don't feel like doing something or the same thing every single day. I don't require that my wife works a job somewhere using her degree and pays half of the bills. So guess what? She's a stay at home mom and she doesn't have to pay any bills. So the money she gets from our earnings as a couple, because what's mine is hers. She could do what she want to do with it. So to me, it, not, it, it may not make any sense to me. My wife this year has read over 40 books. These are fiction books. So it's not teaching her anything, but it gives her an escape from her life and just relaxation. So if that's just from mommying and wifing, that doesn't make sense to me. But I have um, three vehicles that's like personally mine. And then she has two. So that's five vehicles at our house. My three vehicles, two of them are kind of like sports cars. One is American though and one is English, I think. That doesn't really make sense to her. I bought my dad a Maserati. That's a sports car, so I could drive his too. And then I bought our friends and family cars. That doesn't make sense to her either. But for me, I'm like, listen, I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to grind all these years. These people who done, done watch me do this, we got the extra. I want to be a blessing. I'm not going to carry them. Now, we pay for the housing of my mother, and her mother that's something for life now because they don't they don't earn the money to take care of that themselves and so that's that's a bill that's gonna be with me I'm working so that's if at some point things change which I, I don't speak that or claim that that would induce stress so that keep me motivated that keep me grinding that keep me thinking about my next move my next grind and so now I'm, the reason why I'm creating my YouTube channel for my cars is because it's a lot of car channels who don't have cars you know as, as nice as mine or they have cars as nice as mine but they using social media to earn putting them cars to work for them 
So instead of my cars just collecting dust, I got to put them to work because I'm a businessman. And I'm a business man, like the man say, Jay-Z said. So this is where you got to realize how a man mind work. So where I'm faithful to my wife and I don't watch porn and I don't masturbate, I'm going to buy me a car now and I'm going to do business. I'm going to build business. I'm going to make connections. So I own a, a, a piece of uh, another media company that I started. I own a piece of a uh, pizza slicer from one of my clients. I own a piece of a natural hair care company. I'm starting another cosmetic company. My, my 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 own brand you see what i'm saying and i own a piece of a real estate investment company with two partners i have my own real estate investment company i have a tech company my own and i own a piece of another tech company and i own a piece of another tech company so i'm gonna do business all of these percentages all of this equity that's going to yield income because tech is big. Tech is a big deal. One of the tech companies I own a piece of is in the sports memorabilia space. So y'all seen me post that on my Instagram. So that eventually could turn into, that's eventually going to turn into multi-millions in that space that I know. But my goal is to be a billionaire. So I got to diversify and I gotta intensify. So I got to figure out what, and this is what every man have to come to terms with, what is going to motivate, inspire me, and keep me focused and locked in, and what is going to become a distraction and a hindrance. So when I buy a collectible car, that's motivation and inspiration. It don't, even if I finance it on a car note, I make sure that car note, I'm not gonna feel it because I'm gonna because I'm gonna earn enough to not feel it. I ain't gonna stress myself out and put myself in stress over the car note. But then when the car paid, now this car just gonna be a straight asset because it's gonna be earning money on YouTube, and when I sell it, it's gonna sell for either at least double what I paid for it, but I'm buying cars that it's going to sell for 10 times what I paid for it or five times what I paid for it. And so it's an investment. When I buy other little collectibles, it's certain purses that I buy my wife that I know when we 65, 70, them purses going to be worth four times and sell four times what we paid for it. So I make also that fashion purchase is an investment because my wife literally got purse. I got a watch that I could sell it now for more than I paid for it. That's an investment. So that's where I give my energy and my time to looking into things that can better me. And so as a woman, when you meet a man, you have to look at the fact that he is a human. And so you got to do a risk analysis, a risk assessment. When you talk to him and you get like Polly on the movie, Polly, you know how he, he's a risk assessment manager or something like that. When you talk to him, hey, I'm talking for a long time now. This is a whole seminar now. It's a whole seminar. When you talk to this man, you got to look at his choices, his decisions, his habits, his addictions, and then you got to do the risk assessment. This is where he gets pleasure from. Will this is this pleasure most likely? to lead to, to happiness or to pain? Is this pleasure gonna benefit him or is it gonna hurt him? 
if he did this regularly, will it benefit him or hurt him? If he does it and it could benefit him only to a certain point, does he have the character and the mindset to know when he has reached that threshold and to not go beyond that? You will know that by how he talks, what he talks about, meaning is he immature or is he mature? Is he hurting himself with the things he does or is he helping himself or trying to help himself with the things he does? This is where you get to realize this. Now, understand this. Men love variety and men love what we love and what we love, we love the best of it. So a wine connoisseur don't want no $6 wine out of the drugstore. A wine connoisseur is going to spend the max of his budget on his wine. A car connoisseur is going to spend the max of his budget on his cars. A watch connoisseur is going to spend the max of his budget on his watches. So guess what? When it comes to a woman, Every man that is heterosexual, of course, loves women. So when a man gets his woman, he will want his woman to be the max of a woman. So what I mean by that is, if you are an easy woman, he may keep you, but he does not want you. If you are a weak woman, he may keep you, but he does not want you. If you do not know who you are, where you're going, and what you want, he may keep, he, keep you, but he does not want you. That is why men don't do more because it's not required. Because if a woman doesn't require communication from a man, he's going to communicate the least. If a woman doesn't require consistency from a man, he's going to be inconsistent. If a woman doesn't require respect from a man, he's going to disrespect her. So then the question is, well, Tony, why can't a man do what he should do, do what a decent human being should do? And it's because human beings are not decent. We are born into sin. And we are sinners until we are born again until we are renewed until we become a new person a new creature then and for me it's through Christ and for a lot of people on this channel that's what it is but see you have to make sure and you got to look it does this man or woman want to be renewed does this man want to grow, want to change? So here's what I did. This is what I did. I was very, very, very bad with money. I wanted to look successful, feel successful, be successful. But I was hustling backwards. And I was living outside of my means and I wasn't being responsible with my money. So I kept failing in the early years of my entrepreneurship. And so here's what I had to do. I had to add wisdom to my pleasure. And when I say pleasure, it's just for lack of a better term, but to my outlet, I had to add wisdom to it. So here's what I said I'm gonna do. Out of my gross earnings, I'm going to sow 10%. Off the top, 10% has to be given. So now what this does is it puts me financially in right standing with my creator who is blessing me with the ability to earn. So I said, I'm going to give. And if I'm able, I'm going to give above and beyond. So I make sure that I give 10% of my gross 
income. So that means if I make 100,000 in a year, I'm gonna give at least 10,000. Now with the way that I give, that means I'm gonna give 20,000 to 30,000 because I end up giving like 20%, really. If I make a million, that means I'm gonna give a, at least $1 million away, meaning helping others in need. If I make 10 million, that means, no, a million, 100,000. If I make 10 million, that means I'm gonna give at least 1 million away, helping, blessing, sowing. I put that in place. So I realized that of all the vices, rewarding myself by by buying something that I like or enjoy is not a bad thing unless it's done out of order. So let me give 10%. Let me invest, save basically 10%, but I'm saving in, in an investment account. And then let me invest 10% meaning invest into a business that can continue to earn based on business. So that's 30% of what I get to bring home because you also got taxes. So if your taxes take off X amount of percent, depending on the tax bracket, then you got another 30% that's gone. So that could leave you with just this percentage to live out of. Now, at certain seasons, you gotta tweak that. Gotta use wisdom. Just can't be something that's hard and fast because life changes. So if life changes, if income changes, now you may only be able to save 5%, invest 10, I mean, invest 5%. Now, one thing that I'm gonna keep is that 10% giving. When I started doing that 10% giving, that changed my life. Since I started making sure I give 10%, I've been blessed and blessed more abundantly. And I believe that that's God's law and a universal law because I see people who are not godly who give who make a habit of giving and they get back it comes back to them and so I feel like God set that in motion you know for the just and the unjust that if you have a giving heart it's going what goes around comes around it's gonna come back to you and so because I see it happen on both sides but see now this is the thing you got to have some type of outlet as a man and so as a woman realize this when this man is into heavily into business and his purpose don't get so caught up complaining about that if you have no problems out of him with gambling with pornography and with cheating that is his outlet that's what's saving him from cheating on you you're not ever going to have every single thing you want in a human because humans are going to find some type of outlet. As a woman who is the CEO of a home, your outlet may be sitting down and kicking up your feet and saying, listen, I ain't cooking nothing, I ain't cleaning nothing, I ain't touching nothing, don't ask me for nothing. That in that moment is your outlet and you deserve that. So it would be wrong for a man to come to a woman and say, you got to cook and clean every day like you a robot. That would be wrong because that woman deserves an outlet too. Because if she being faithful to that man, when she could be having her outlet by hopping on her a different size pole every day, angling from a different man, she could be doing that. She could be maxing out credit cards and going absolute broke shopping every day. She avoiding toxic pleasure, negative pleasure. And if she indulges, meaning when I say indulge, I don't mean the literal sense, but if she takes part in a guilty pleasure, meaning when she sits down and says, I'm not cooking this week or today, she feels a little guilty, but she also feels pleasure from it because it's her break. She deserves that because that's not gonna make or break anything. That ain't the end of the world. That doesn't define her, it doesn't define her as a woman, don't define her as a wife, don't define her as a mom, 
and that ain't gonna make or break nothing. But now if she going out and she's spending all of the family savings at the mall, that's gonna destroy something. If she going out and she's sleeping with another man, when her man don't feel like tuning her up, that's gonna destroy something. So that's why when you dealing with somebody, especially, you know, I'm speaking from a man perspective, when you dealing with a man, you got to make sure you hold him accountable, but understand you can't create a robot. You're going to have to give somewhere. So for me, I just got me in the car. Um, I sold two cars and I gave one away. I had three that I just liquidated. And then I got me another one. Okay. American made car. And so uh, American cars is not going to be expensive as foreign cars. And so it's not as expensive as the foreign cars that I've bought, but I like the car. And that didn't make sense to my wife. That didn't make sense to her. But she respected it and she said, baby, if you really want it, then get it. Because she know how hard I work and she know every other area that I sacrifice in that I could be indulging in that could destroy our marriage. So she said this right here at our level of income, this ain't going to destroy us. But if you need an outlet and you go indulge in something else because every human need an outlet, don't feel like you don't because you're going to explode because life is going to apply pressure. So you need something. If it's getting your hands and feet done. You need that. If it's going on a walk every day, you need that. You need something. And so my wife came to me today and she showed me a little bag with a little a, a little pouch thing about this big. <sighs> Y'all gotta forgive me. I'm getting tired now. But hey, I'm talking to you. And a little pouch and then a little bracelet that she bought. And she ordered that. We got a card and we used that credit card. And I told her last week, I said, hey, baby, I paid off that credit card. So if the shopper that you follow online have something that you like, you could use that card again because I paid it off. I ain't have to say that twice. Anytime I say that to my wife, I ain't got to say it twice. And what I was telling her, though, what I had to tell her last week, I said, listen, baby. When I pay off the card, I don't mind you using the card. But just tell me you used it because I'm thinking the card empty and then it's reporting to my credit and it's knocking my score down. So just tell me you used it so I could remember to pay it down before the statement cut. Oh, okay. Well, all right. But see, sometimes, but see, what it is is she know that she love fashion and she know that it don't make sense to me. But I know I love cars and business and everything I want to do don't make sense to her. But I know that's her outlet and she know this is my outlet. So we choose to respect and support each other in our healthy, manageable outlets. And this is the issue with relationships is that we don't manage the outlet and we have toxic outlets and so that's the breakdown that i see with women with their man is women are misevaluating the risk and the damage that will be done based on their man's habits and so a woman will shut down this man doing starting a business and pursuing that wholeheartedly but then allow him to sell i mean to smoke weed or allow him to get drunk and it's like which one is gonna do the most damage because yes although he have this harebrained business idea if that's gonna challenge him and push him and keep him engaged and if it hits, it can yield a return. That's way better than him diving into drugs and alcohol or pornography 
that will just deplete him, destroy the relationship, and it brings no return, no healthy or positive return. So this is what you got to realize and understand is you're not going to meet a man who is perfect, but you got to take the time to evaluate his character. And you got to realize that men, just like a little boy, men are short circuited in the sense of we need spontaneity. Uh, we and, and then when I say spontaneity, I mean we need um that might not be the word. We need stimulation, we need variety. Men, we get bored very easy. This is every man gets bored very easy of something in, in some area. Some men, some men could eat the same meal every day. But a lot of the men who eat the same meal every day, they can't be with the same woman every day. The man who could be with the same woman every day can't eat the same meal every day. Can't drive the same car every day. It's something that a man needs variety. And so what you have to do is like, okay, would I rather him collect women or would I rather him collect businesses? Would I rather him collect women or would I rather him collect porno? Would I rather him collect... Oh, no, that, that, that was the wrong one now. <laughs> you know, my short circuit, I like collect women or collect... Now, we don't want to collect neither one of those now. We don't want to collect neither one of those. I meant to say, uh, instead of the other, what I meant to say? Uh, watches. Would I rather him collect aren't old or collect shoes? Would I rather him collect aren't old and women or collect cars? Would I rather him collect women or collect trading cards? You see what I'm saying? You have to know that this man needs an outlet. Would I rather him at home on his video game for four hours on Friday night or Saturday or out in the strip club? He going to have to have an outlet. But at the same time, you have to have what you need on the calendar. So listen, if he loved a video game, if he loves sports, let him have the game, let him have the sports. But build that in, make him build that in around y'all date night, around y'all talk time. Make him build that in around those things. So now he gets his outlet and while he's in his outlet, the woman needs to have an outlet. So when I'm doing my Q&A on Instagram, that's also my outlet. It's my purpose too. But my wife is reading a book. While I'm doing this right here, my wife, this is work. This is my purpose. My wife folding clothes. That's her work. So I don't. I wouldn't mind folding clothes and helping out, but she don't want me to help her fold like fold clothes. She don't want me to cook. She don't want me to do dishes because she don't work for nobody else. So it's certain things in the house that she sees as her work that she want to do, and she don't want me in the way. And so I respect that, and honestly, I don't want to do that because to me, that's boring. To her, this is boring. She don't like what I have to do, and she, she would. She never want to be a life coach. My wife could make six figures as a life coach right now, and she do not want to do it. That's not fun to her. That's not a blessing to her. That's a burden to her. Women ask all the time, can you write a book? Can you be a coach? Can you do that? Can you do YouTube? My answer, my wife's answer is no. We getting our course uploaded right now. This is the first course my wife has been a part of. It's called Parents Helping Parents. So if you're a parent or you want to be a parent one day, go to TonyGassonAcademy.com. Sign up for it. It's on the way. It's coming. But again, life, she focused on her priority. So this course is taking longer. And then just mishaps. You know, my younger son, uh, head butted in the, in the eye. 
he he was and I, I said babe I'm not understanding this now because he this tall and you this tall she was like no he hugged his teacher and she was bending down and then she reached up to me like to do a distance hug so she was like I leaned forward and he came up and when he came up so my wife eyes purple and green right here I said that is not good for me you know ain't nobody finna believe that that your son head wasn't you in the eye now they finna be talking on it way I said it's not good for me and then school just came back so that changed our little course schedule but that's her priority and so I have to respect that so when my wife get these fashion items out of her pay from our business ventures I can't get upset if out of her pay she want to spend all of it on fashion stuff that's her passion guess what I'd rather her buy that than to be buying a horn subscription than to be buying that oil. a lot of women buy that oil. my wife not into that she ain't into nasty movies she ain't into toys to stimulate herself she ain't in, she could be into that that could be her outlet I'm glad it's not and that I get to be the outlet she into fashion it could be into pills into powder into weed it could be into something gambling there are women who gamble like crazy it could be that it's not so you know what has happened with her fashion is the type of fashion she liked to buy when she ready to sell it it sells for more than she paid for it so actually her quote-unquote guilty pleasure is also an investment so this is what I mean is by as humans knowing your shortcomings knowing where you need an outlet and making sure that what you're doing is going to enhance and not tear down so if you love to get your hands and feet done that's an investment because you look better you feel better you're going to attract better you see what i mean but if you taking and you maxing out credit cards to look a certain way now you're creating problems you're making your life harder and that's what we had to work and grow through and we went through times in our life where we had to really we really made some mistakes and we had to live with that until we learned so oh i forgot what i was telling you so here's what i did now you got to look at your man you got to look at your woman you got to look at yourself as a man you got to look at yourself as a woman and so wherever your outlet is whatever your habit is whatever your thing is you got to make sure that it's being done in a healthy way so i told you about the 10 10 10. I'm a give 10, I'm going to save 10, I'm going to invest 10 in the business or into a business. That's what I'm going to do. And so, guess what? With that, now, out of that other 70, I can live. So I'm going to pay all my bills, pay all the house bills, pay the bills of the people that I'm helping out, my mama, my mother-in-law, paying their bills pay any car notes that I have for other people my daddy car note my mama car note um, I got my, my homeboys and my sister and my mother-in-law car I bought them cash but I got a couple car notes I pay them car note pay my insurance for the cars and out of that then I could do me you know but the car the cars I have the things I do that's a bill so that's a part of my bills but I make sure I'm not gonna pay a car note if I can't pay the lights and water I'm not gonna pay a car note before paying my son's tuition paying for my son's sports so I still have to prioritize and if I had to choose between having a car repossess and my credit being damaged or paying my son's tuition and their extracurricular activities 
I'm going to choose their tuition and extracurricular activities. So this is where you find the healthy balance of knowing what you're doing and knowing that what you're doing is not going to turn into something negative or something that's going to hurt you. And for women, this is what I want you to understand is that you have more power than you realize. And then when you meet this man and you identify his character, you identify his character flaws, you identify his style, his personality, what he likes and doesn't like, what you have to realize is that you play a huge part in his life and in helping him become a better man and going to the next level as he does for you. Because 9 out of 10 women, 99.9% .9 of women will change for their man, for the better or the worse. 9 out of 10 men will change for their woman, for the better or for the worse. And that's what we have to realize and understand. So, hey, it's a long video today. I don't know where this going up at, but... Woo! Well, I'm sure a little time. And this is all over the place here. But I want to explain men and just our ways and our habits and just how we are and how you got to pick... You know, like they say, pick your poison. I don't want to call it poison, but you got to pick. Like, what is the lesser of the two? Like, what that I may not fully understand, but this actually could have some upside versus blocking that. And then, because I, 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 see, I see men who they're blocked by their family or their wife from buying cars and so you know what they do they become alcoholics they're blocked from buying cars and watches so they become a drug addict the outlet is gonna happen it's gonna happen they become they get blocked by their wife from from buying cars or watches or trading cards so they become a cheater the outlet gonna happen somewhere. So you got to make sure that you providing enough space and room for a human to be a human in a healthy and productive way. And a part of humaning is having a balance, so to speak, quote unquote, to your life where you have work and you have play. But the play should add to your life instead of taking away from your life. And so me being a former womanizer, I could fall back into that. Now I'm getting tests from women, meaning women coming into my my space, my stratosphere on social media and showing up in my DMs and these women look like or come from a different look or a different race that I've never dealt with. So this is the adversary trying to tempt me and test me in that. I already see it, I'm speaking on it. So that's putting it out there. That also provides accountability for myself. So I'm not going to fall for that. But see, that could be something that someone indulges in if they're not processing or if they don't have another outlet. So you know what I'm about to do for my free time? Because see, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. So what I'm going to do in my free time is do business. So I got a series that's going to be coming here for y'all soon. And I'm flying to Washington, D.C. to be on the set to be there. So y'all get ready for that. Got to lock in when it's done. And it's going to be some fun, a little serious. And then the next day, after I'm going to be there for two days, then I'm going to Cleveland, Ohio to watch a boxing match. Now, my wife, she is a homebody. She has no desire to fly to Cleveland to, to have her mom come over and watch our sons and to go to D.C. and to go to Cleveland with me. She don't have a desire to go. She will go if I ask her to go, but she don't have a desire to go. And so her outlet is her the stuff she like about fashion. And then sometimes she'll go, but I got to leave on Friday 
so and then when I come back, I got to come back on Monday. So she will hate to have her mom doing the school routine for the boys on Friday and Monday. So she say, you go have a blast because she understand the load that I carry dealing with everybody in the world problems. So she realizes that that is relaxing for me. And I get a little anxiety about leaving because I hate leaving without my wife or my kids. But I realize for my mental health as well, just that alone time, I could process my next book because I need to be writing my next book proposal to for my next book deal. Or if I'm going to self-publish, I need to decide that. And so I need that that peace, that quiet, that alone time to be able to hear from God about what my next step is. My wife, instead of her saying, why do you have to leave me? Why do you, are you cheating on me? Is it another woman? Instead of her going into this negative space and thinking like that and accusing me, she respects my self care, my self love, my me prioritizing my mental health. She respect that. Instead of me saying to her, why are you reading fiction books? That is not adding to your life. Like you could be, because you love to read, you could be reading nonfiction business books and and giving me a summary so that I could continue to build business on a whole nother level. And I have said that in the past to her years ago, like why you don't read a biz, a, a, a nonfiction book, still a fiction book. And the Lord convicted me. And said, listen, this her thing. I already got the lesson. I don't need you in the comments adding to it. I already got the lesson. Lord say, this her thing. You let her have her outlet just like you want to have your outlet. Instead of me saying, hey, why are you buying, you know, this fashion? Like, why are you into this fashion and this antiques and this, this hill and this hill? You know, why are you shopping on Facebook Marketplace buying the antique dresses and stuff? That's her outlet. It don't make sense to me. It ain't supposed to. But what love is, is love is respecting it. What love is, is love is supporting it. As long as it's not destroying us. It don't hurt us in the least. It don't hurt us financially. So now if it was hurting us financially, okay, now love is speaking up. And say, hey, hold on now. This is... Uh, 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 uh. All right, got to get this together. Same thing with her to me. I love business. I get ready to open this, get ready to open that, get ready to open that, but it's going to put too much on me. It's going to put too much of a strain. It's going to call too much attention. So love is my wife speaking up. Baby, I don't think it's time for that. She speaks up and she tells me. I don't say, you a woman, you don't know nothing about them business. Shut up. Because that's like such and such be saying. Like the other men be saying, women don't know nothing about no business. Hush, stay in your place. That's not love. That's control. That's disrespect. So what I say, you know what, baby, you right. Let me just step outside of myself, look at it from, from your angle. From I, You know what, you right. I don't even want that kind of stress. I don't even want all that. You know what, you show sure right. But then I have another business idea, and it don't cause no stress. And she say, that's a great idea. You ought to do it. Boom. Don't matter if it costs money to invest in. Don't matter what kind of time it's going to take to get it going. If it makes sense and it sounds good and it's in it's in my passion, it's in my space, and it makes sense to her, she say, go right ahead. That is love. Love is speaking up when you need to speak up, when you see your spouse about to destroy themselves or the family. And love is being quiet and supporting when you see your spouse is loving themselves and taking care of their mental health and their self-care and their self-love even if it don't make sense to you. It's keeping them in a positive outlet that is not destructive. And even if that is not what you would do with your free time or your money, that is their thing and loving is supporting them in that if it's not hurting anything. Point blank period, yard. Hey, so listen, I don't even know what to call this video. So y'all just understand with the hill title, whatever it may be, you know, forgive me if it don't, if the title can't encompass, you know, 
what this video about. But um, we done came this here far. I know some of y'all. Now, if you got to this point, put be blessed in the comments. Because I just want to, when I see it, I, I'm going to come back to the comments sometime, Lord willing. When I see that be blessed, I'm just going to heart it. I'm just gonna heart it because you got this. You 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 a real for one. You a real supporter. Two, you really really investing in yourself because I know YouTube and lace this thing with all kind of outside. Hey, let hey let let YouTube do what they do. Okay, all right. I'm on here now. I'm on here. I don't believe in just spending all kind of time. And 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 not using my time wisely now. So y'all, hey, go on now, go on. Don't be trying to block people blessing now. I don't know why. Cause if you ain't, if you ain't paying me, if you ain't putting food on my table, hey, let YouTube do what YouTube do. All right, and just pray the Lord for it. Pray the Lord with me. Hey, but it's Tony Gaston. Thank you so much for listening. To this I did not intend. I was, this video was supposed to be thirty minutes, and I ain't know where I was going. But I just wanted to explain something. Just to bring a little bit more clarity for because I see so many women struggling with understanding men. And I just want to help women understand that you can stand your ground and play a very powerful role in a man's life. But he is going to be certain ways that you won't understand just like you as a woman are certain ways that he won't understand. But when you fall in love together, y'all can respect each other and support each other and push each other to be better. Hey, this is Tony Gaston. God bless you. We'll talk soon.